The last posture we need to adopt is hope, which is inherent in the act of prayer itself. When Muslims gather for Friday prayer mosques, the Imam attests that God will remember and respond to us. In the Amida, Jews say that God heals the sick and releases the imprisoned. In the Lord's Prayer, Christians say that God's kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. These are not delusional descriptions of our world as it is today. They are fervent hopes for its future. Hope that things can be better than they are, that each new dawn is our chance to make it so. I've learned so much about hope from people who seem to have the least reason for it. There are millions of refugees in my country, and they have embodied hope at every turn. When they packed their bags, when they fled by foot, when they made a new home in an unfamiliar place, when they, who had almost nothing, still found ways to share everything, food, laughter, music, and love. In their voices, I hear the voices of scripture, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them. People who called out injustice and in the same breath offered hope. They too were forced from their homes, fleeing violence and persecution at some point in their lives. And yet, they proclaimed hope. Not hope as an add-on to sweeten a bad deal. Not hope as a cushion to soften the blow of reality, but hope as a truth just as durable as hardship, an appeal to us all to keep trying. The United States has long been a landmark of hope, a shining city on a hill. Obviously, I'm not an American, but I say that as someone who cares deeply about this country who had long admired the values that inspire the U.S. at its best. At its best, this country has embraced outsiders, recognizing that diversity enriches everyone. At its best, this country has been generous with compassion, ready to lend a, lend a helping hand to those in need. At its best, this country's gift for innovation has sparked growth and opportunity. Polarization has pulled so many away from the values at the core of this country, values that others around the world look up to. In doing so, it has fractured friendships, families, and entire communities. I believe Americans know how much healing is required for this country to be its best self. But God can guide the way back to those values and together, our world can find its way forward. For in the end, humility, unity, and hope are not our destination. They enable us to find the third way. And make no mistake, we will stumble from the path, but we always have the chance to return. We may return on a prayer mat or at the communion table, in a synagogue, a temple, or in the privacy of our home, walking in nature, or in a simple moment of quiet contemplation. These practices can feel like five or 10 minute breaks from the world. But truly, we need the values of prayer to break into the rest of our lives and the rest of the world, to impress on our hearts over and over the surprising truths of the universe that there is dignity in humility and power in surrender, that we find freedom in forgiveness, and that we can only truly find ourselves by giving ourselves to the service of others. Islam calls it islah, reform of ourselves, our relationships, and our society. Christianity calls it seeking the kingdom, different names for the same responsibility to love our neighbor, a love as real as bread to a hungry child, care for a sick widow, and a roof over the head of a refugee. The dawn looks different from every point on earth, but the same sky 
reaches over us all. Friends of all nations, may God show us the path and may we walk that shared path side by side. Thank you.